Hey everyone, Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the uh, last time we left off, we finished our enemy's pathfinding ability so they can go across the uh, edge of the screen here without getting index out of bounds errors or exceptions. But unfortunately, there is still an issue with our enemy's movement, which uh, some of you have pointed out in the comments, which is where you move the window. And first off, they stop moving, but the, the real issue is that they will skip. You'll see that the... Uh, distance between these two is way higher and if you stop it right before they get to the edge of the screen like that then they'll sometimes just go right off the screen and the reason this is happening is because uh, our clock is giving data called the delta time which is the time between uh, current the present and also the uh, last update so I'll break it down for you guys when we go to our clock class here I'm sorry let's go to our enemy class first just so we can see what's going on here in our enemy class, when we update, we're saying, okay, check all the checkpoints and stuff and make sure that's all taken care of. But really, nine times out of 10, or actually more than that, every update, we're doing these two lines. We're moving our X position and our Y position based on what direction we're going, the speed we're going, and the time since the last update, the delta time. So that's what's happening every time we update our enemy class. So let's go to our clock class here. And you can see we're getting delta from inside this clock class. So let's go ahead and uh, in our get delta class, let's do some kind of like debugging here, but more just getting some data that we can't see otherwise. I'm going to print out the delta times 0.01f. So this is exactly what we're getting from our get delta method up here. And I'm just gonna print it out to the screen so that we can see the values that we're getting here. So I'll go ahead and run that. You can see usually we're getting about 0 0.17, 0 0.16, that area in between this update and the last update. So what happens when I move the window? Well, it stops updating, right? You can see in the little updates in the uh, bottom left of the screen there, or in the uh, console to the left of the screen, it's no longer counting. So when I let go, I'll stop the program. And these updates is 0 0.16, 0 0.17, all these are since I let go of the program, right? But if we go up a little bit, you'll see this one, 103.22. So that's the amount of time that passed between, or I guess the time that passed while I was holding the window. So when we go to our enemy method here, our update method, we're saying speed in this case is set to uh, five for me when I made my enemy in the uh, boot class of a speed of five. So we're multiplying speed times, this will always be one or negative one or zero. Uh, nothing greater than that. That's just the direction we're going. So five times our delta. And that's every time the game updates. So we go five times 0.17, five times 0.17, five times 0.16. And then down here, five times 103. So usually we're moving like less than a pixel per update. And all of a sudden our enemy moves 500 pixels across the screen. So we're going to fix that now. And the easiest way to do that is to go to our clock class. There are a couple different ways that we can uh, kind of mess around with the time to make it work the way we want it to. Um, but the easiest, let me get rid of that little line that we just wrote there. Um, actually, I'll keep that there just so we can see our the way it works. And here below it, let's say if delta times 0.01f is greater than 0.5f, return 0.5f. So it's usually around 0.1 something, right? And then all of a sudden it gets to 103 or some crazy number when we're holding the window. So we're gonna say if it's counting up and it ever gets higher than 0.5, just give it, just return 0.5. So the worst case scenario is that the number here uh, or the number that we multiply our speed by will be 0 0.5 instead of some crazy 103 number. So let's go ahead and try that now. Move it over here first. And we have our updates going down here. And now let's wait until they get a little bit closer. And boom, I'll click it. And so the longer I hold this window open, the greater our next delta time is going to be. And inside the console, it's still going to print out that huge number 100 something. It's still going to print it out in the console but it won't actually uh, update it by that. <laughs> that looks pretty crazy. It won't actually update it by that amount. So 
when I let go, you could see the enemy is pretty much right where it was. And you could test this yourself too by dragging the window and you could see uh, pretty much no interference. Uh, the enemies act exactly like they're supposed to, so. This should prevent them from uh, going off the track like they were before. Um, hmm. I guess we could implement one more thing in this episode here. Uh, enemy reaches into the maze. Let's go to our enemy class. And instead of having them all pile up at the end of the maze and just say that they're dead, let's actually kill them. So first, in the variables of our enemy, we have a boolean called first, <laughs> first. And I'm gonna make another one called alive. And we'll give it a default value of true because the enemy will start alive. And let's make a new method. We can get rid of this path continues because this is outdated pathfinding information. We don't use that anymore. We're going to say public, um, no, private void die. And in here is what we're going to do anything that we need to happen when the enemy dies. So if the player kills him, then this is the method that will return the uh, value to the player. We'll reward the player with cash or points or whatever. And if the enemy makes it to the end of the screen, this is where we will deduct lives from the player. But for now... Oops. We're just going to make alive equal to false. And then we also need a uh, getter for that because it's a private value. So let's go to the bottom. All right, so now we can check if the enemy is alive because if alive is false, it'll return false. If it's true, it'll return true. So now in our update method, currently we're just saying enemy reached the end of the maze, right? Which is why it's printing out every time we're here. Instead, let's replace this line with our new die method. So we'll tell our enemies to die when they reach the end of the maze. And let's go to our wave class. And then the update of the wave class is where we update all of our enemies. So remember, the wave is what's spawning the enemy, you know, continually. Um, and then it's responsible for updating and drawing all those enemies on the screen. Um, so what we're going to do here then is we're just going to do a simple check. We're going to say if E, which represents any enemy in our enemy list, which is every enemy, if E dot is alive, and we'll do an open bracket and a close bracket after it. And a little trick in Eclipse is if you press Control shift f it will automatically format everything for you nice and clean and indent it correctly. Um, so what we're saying here now, what we just changed, is in our enemy class, um, if we reach the last checkpoint of the maze, we're going to run our die method. And our die method is all the way down here. And all we're doing right now is we're just setting our alive state to false. So we're no longer alive as an enemy. Uh, later we'll add more stuff to this method. And so then in our wave class, every time we update all of our enemies, we're going to first check if the enemy is even alive anymore. If it's not alive, there's no need to update it, and there's no need to draw it. So let's uh, try it out now. And perfect. They uh, hit the edge of the screen or the end of the maze and they don't just sit there and say they're dead. They actually disappear, so that's pretty great. And that means we no longer need to worry about that spam in the uh, console here. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this now. We can get rid of that little line in the clock method. We don't need to hear that printing out. So now our console down here is nice and, uh, nice and tidy, nice and clean. And once these enemies get to the very edge of the maze, we'll no longer get that... Uh, reach into the maze message anymore either. They'll just kind of take care of themselves and cease to exist like that. Perfect. So, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you guys next time.